You're with NewsHour. Well, the changing times, digital technology trends and disruptive technologies are in the space now to make or break business. International institutions, such as the International Monetary Fund, uh, says uh, a country like South Africa could boost its economic rate if modern technology was embraced. Well, joining me to unpack this further is Stuart Scanlon, MD at Epic ERP South Africa. Uh, Stuart, thanks indeed for coming in. Hi, Ben. We'll get into those technological advancements in a moment, and they're certainly creeping into the business fraternity here with a rapid pace. But let me start by asking you perhaps just the psychological fabric of companies at the moment. Uh, one is made to believe that perhaps they, they are still have this fear of change within them. Do you, do you see that as a challenge? Yeah, I th I, yeah, I mean, yeah it's a good point because, I mean, a lot of people associate fear with risk. Yep. And, you know, that often sort of uh, pulls people back from embracing change in technology. And obviously with the rapid pace at which technology is changing, uh, you know, you either need to embrace it or fall off. You know, if we take something a traditional farmer, uh, by today's standards, you know, years back they would rely on intuition in terms of what they should plant, when they should water, where they should water. And by, you know, a lot of the modern day farmers are taking technologies like the Internet of Things and taking sensors straight out of, uh, you know, out of the soil. They know exactly where they've got a problem and where things are going right. So they're, they're being a lot more proactive. And, you know, and the, the, the people that are fearing that change are kind of falling behind that curve. Because it's not really a sense of competency. I mean, we've got a, a real competent business fraternity in South Africa. But then again, it's really whether or not they take the risk, they pay the money, and whether or not technology will be advanced after they embrace the one set. Uh, I suppose that's another challenge there. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, you know, we're seeing that, you know, and a yeah. lot of businesses now moved into a global scale where, you know, it's access to this information and people are sort of seeing it that, uh, you know, you need to sort of move forward with in terms of if you're going to compete in a global scale, South Africa is not a little isolated community anymore, it, you know, and not just within Africa, you know, on the global scale. If we go and look at what's uh, happened in Mossel Bay, you know, you know, we're starting to stand up, uh, you, know, you know, and stand on that global stage. And a lot of investments being made in South Africa and Africa. Uh, you know, I was just talking to somebody in Poland uh, just this morning around a project that they're about to launch into a number of different African countries. And these are great times because, you know, I think we, we're starting to get these phone calls a lot more and a lot of people are investing in not only infrastructure but people, businesses, and, and you need to, to take that technology to obviously bring in profitability and grow these businesses. Let's take a look at some of those disruptors at the moment. I mean, one that stands out is this artificial intelligence for robotics. I mean, if you look at the manufacturing sector, for example, yeah. uh, I mean, that, that, as I understand it, could be used in decision-making for purchasing. We've seen that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think in terms of, if you take something and take a practical example of yeah. artificial intelligence, and you had... Um, you know, if, if you went out and you ordered a pizza, you can predict when this pizza is going to arrive because you can see it on your phone. But take that few steps further and all this wearable technology that people are wearing, you know, this is creating masses of data and trends. Now you bring that up and that trend can start to tell you people are, you know, uh, we've had cases where heart attacks have been prevented, etc. You know, now it's not just that. Now you can actually predict where people will be and what's the fastest rapid time that you can get there. So it's being able to make those decisions based on information coming from non-traditional sources, and that's what's truly exciting. You know, we've got a, you know, one of an, uh, an Epicor customer in Europe has taken a drone and taken, you know, pretty much off-the-shelf product, put on a pretty much off-the-shelf reader, and you know, in a few hours from now they'll be launching this thing to go and do a stock take in their environment. That's pretty exciting mm -hmm. stuff, you know. So when he gets in in the morning, the MD knows exactly what the stock level is. And what this has done is, yes, it's disrupted a traditional labor force, yeah. but it's brought in a lot more skilled labor and, and, and improved accuracy, profitability. And these are things that are, you know, at the forefront of any boardroom table. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's worried about, you know, how do we increase profits and, you know, taking technology, you can do that. And I suppose some of those disruptors would have labor implications some not. Yeah. Uh, but the other interesting one was real-time visibility for decision-making. I mean, I would understand that it involves instantly accessing how the company's performing at a particular time. 
yes. uh, while doing your current job. Uh, yes. You see some of this stuff in the movie scenes, yes. but how, how, how apparent and prevalent is this? Well, well we're seeing now that, that what you've taken a traditional, specifically if we took manufacturing sector, yes. uh, you'd rely, you know, traditionally it would happen on after the fact information. That's right. I would have labor that was manually captured, I would understand machine downtime. So what's happened is we've seen a huge shift in mindset. I want to capture labor in real time, I want to capture materials, and also take that, not just the labor component and materials, I'm now taking machine data, and I'm reading and I'm correlating those three together. So when somebody arrives on shift at 8 o'clock in the morning, and the production only starts at 8.30, what happened to those 30 minutes? Because that's profitability that's lost within the business. And these are trends that business... You know, you, you can't rely on being, you know, after the fact because you may be out of business and you don't even know it yet, you know, because profits are being squeezed really tight in the manufacturing sector. But we're seeing a lot of manufacturers move towards this uh, squeezing that extra dime out of it and, and uh, getting great results. Stuart, we're going to have to leave it there, but very interesting indeed. Thanks.